Hey everybody, it's Andy, always helping you build a career you love, but today we're also gonna talk about your life and I'm gonna share some personal stuff of my own and techniques that I've used throughout my entire life that have helped me be successful and I wanted to share them with you because I get asked, I have, well, I have been asked so many times throughout my, my life, how is it that you are so productive? How is it that you are so passionate about everything that you do and undertake? And where does all the energy come from? And where does all the energy come from? And so I've really been looking forward to sharing this with you. And I'm going to show you exactly what's inside my journal. There are 11 things that I want to share with you about that and hope you can apply them to your work and to your life. I think they will do wonders to benefit you. This isn't, now, it, it is about my journal, but it isn't about how I plan my day. That's a video for another day. Today is really about how do I think through everything that I do each day and how does it how does it make sense to me? How, how does it, why does it matter? How should I approach it? How should I think about it? So let's get started. Let's talk about the journal itself first. I use a, um, uh, uh, just a, a lectern 1917 journal. I have a few of them here with me. Nothing special. They're uh, lot, just lined paper. They're easy to carry around in my brief bag or my computer bag or whatever I choose to do with them. Uh, but just, just very sturdy, very neat, great for note taking. Uh, I, I, I like bulleting things. So they, they, they just, they're, they're, they're absolutely, absolutely wonderful. So each day when I get into the journal or when I just, even the, even the things that I'm going to do that are inside the journal, I have this to be at my best list. And it's just a, it's a reminder to me. There's seven things that I like to do each day. It's kind of my daily checklist of habits. It's not all my habits, but it's it's seven that I try to do every day. It's rising early, exercising, asking futuristic questions, which I'll share with you here shortly, meditating. I do some excellence planning, which I will also share with you. I do a little journaling, some gratitude, and I affirm my why. If I do each of these items every day, I know I will be at my best to be energetic, passionate, enthusiastic, and embrace all the projects that I have with the people that I meet with and all of that great stuff. It's really it, 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 really, it really centers me. Then what I like to do is I have some questions that I like to run through. Maybe I'm doing these in the shower at the health club or, or in my house or maybe with my coffee. But I always ask myself these key questions. There's, there's seven or, or so of these. You know, who do I want to be today? How do I want to interact with others? How can I make a difference? Who needs me on my A game? These are just a few of them. Uh, that I ask myself every day, but they really get me thinking about how I'm going to approach the day. So where my to be at my best daily are the things that I want to do to make sure that I know that if I do these, I'm going to be in great shape. Well, if I ask myself these questions and I think in advance of what I'm going to do and the encounters that I'm going to have, I know I will do them all well. So that's, that's the second thing. The third thing is I have these daily reminders. I don't know about your life, my life is very, very packed. Let's, I don't even like to word the, use the word hectic. It's just, it's packed. I run a business, I run, actually I run multiple businesses, I have a lot going on, I do an awful lot of things, I have lots of hobbies, interests, I have a lovely wife and family, I have my dogs, which you probably have seen, who are actually in the corner there now while I'm shooting, uh, which I absolutely love. So I have, these, I have these daily reminders that basically just make sure that I'm in order each day. There are things like being responsible for my energy, making sure that I'm not holding on to any tension, uh, trading expectations for appreciation. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit here, but uh, you know we all have expectations of how our lives should turn out. I don't know how, how right many of us are about them, but usually expectations are false or faulty and appreciation can never be faulty. But just adopting a learning mindset so that I know when I struggle that it's not a failure and sometimes I struggle for, for days on end or weeks on end or even months on end, depending on how big the project is. So these are just reminders not to complain, um, anticipating issues that could occur throughout the day. These are just, these just center me. So I, uh, 
I just, I love those daily reminders. It only takes me a few seconds to go through them, but if you do that each morning, you know that when you encounter these kind of things, you're going to be ready for them. I also have these daily improvement questions that I ask. I love this part of my day. I wrote, I wrote these questions out. There are five questions that I ask myself every single day that help me better my business, better myself, and, and make me work in a more optimum form. And this is where a lot of the ideas come from uh, and, and the material and the training programs and the gifts and all the things that I do with the Mile Walk Academy, this is where a lot of them come from. And I actually shared these five questions that I asked myself in a live office hours video that I did about the fastest way to improve your career. I gave you my five questions and then I made analogous questions for you if you work for a corporation, how you might adjust those questions. But my questions are, what can I do uh, or what, what can I improve for my paying students or my existing customers? What can I do to improve, uh, what can I improve to give more value to my community? Anybody who's watching this, I think about what can I do to give you more value? How can I better market my services? So from a, a brand awareness and a marketing perspective, how could I better market my services? How can I improve my internal systems because I want to become more efficient? And what should I stop doing? So I ask myself those five questions every day. It's an idea generating exercise. I absolutely love it. It's what gets me charged up because that's where all the ideas come from and then I get excited about doing those things for you. Uh, but it's, it's really what gets my attitude in order. And, and plus it gives me great projects to work on and things that are of real value. I'll never be able to do all of them but I spend a few minutes on each of those questions every day and I brainstorm. It's a wonderful way to get yourself charged up. Then I affirm my why. I never want to forget why I do what I do. It's, uh, it's something that I wrote and have tinkered with for about 15 years. I repackaged it uh, at the end of last year. It's four little paragraphs. I have it memorized. I say it three to 10 times every day, but it, it starts with, I was created to positively change more than 100 million lives through my teaching. It's what I want to do. I'm not very numbers oriented. We're going to talk about this in a minute, but I wanted in my why to make sure that I had some order of magnitude so that I, 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 had, a, I had something big to reach for. And it goes on to talk about why I'm going to do that, how I'm going to do that, and all that good stuff. And uh, it, it is with me all the time. I say it every morning, either at my desk, in my sunroom, on my way to the health club or wherever, but I know it every day. It's going to come out a number of times and it's what keeps me centered and I never lose sight of why I do what I do. It's a big deal for me and it really helps me stay focused, stay focused. That's the, one of the biggest challenges that we all have. I also have, I call this, I, I have this meaningful checklist. It's not a meaningful checklist. It's when, when I'm going to do something, what does it mean to me? So this is the checklist that I go through before I say yes to anything. I get, and probably like you, we, we all get a lot of requests, whether they're in our personal life or whether they're from, for our business. And so before we just say yes, because I know we regret a lot of things that we say yes to. Uh, it sounded good at the time that three weeks from now we're going to babysit so-and-so. It, it sounded great. It sounded fun. But when the time comes, we've got to make sure that we actually can, can do it and follow through on what we commit to. But there's a lot of things that I get requests on. Uh, people want me to speak. People want me to work on their podcasts with them. Those kinds of things. I get lots and lots of requests. Uh, would I write an article with somebody? Things, things of that nature. So what I do is I go through these, these four uh, questions that have to do with my level of enthusiasm, my connection to it, whether I will be satisfied, and just the coherence of how it fits into my life. So, you know, I ask myself, well, will it excite me? Is this something that I will be passionate about and it will be fun for me and I'll, I'll be enthusiastic about it? Second thing I ask, you know, will it deepen the relationship that I have with the other people or, or individual or people that I am going to interact with. I also ask myself, will it, will it satisfy me? Will it actually satiate something that I'm trying to do, a skill I'm trying to build, a project I'm trying to work on, 
or is it just something I want to volunteer to do? You know, that, that's, that's very important that it be satisfying with whatever it is that we do. And then the last thing is coherence. Is this something that fits into my overall work life or my life life? And, and is it going to be, do I want this to be a big part of my story? And I just run through it very, very quickly. And I think about if, will it make a difference? Will it actually make a difference if I do that? Who am I going to be helping? Will it make a difference for me? Will it make a difference for them? So before I say yes to anything, I kind of go through that process and I assess it. Very helpful, saves me from doing a lot of things that I would otherwise regret and I'm sure it will help you, save you from a lot of things that you would otherwise regret. I also have these little reminders. These are kind of silly, but they but I really like them. Uh, I call them engagement questions. These are questions that I literally ask myself and my team and my teammates or my, my clients or whoever or, or people I'm coaching or whoever it might be so that you know it'll stimulate and kind of pause me and help remind me, hey, think about it. Think of it this way. What would happen if we tried this? I want to think about the consequences, the upsides, the downsides, those kind of things. Um, you know, what's the best way to approach this? Is this something we could do better? And these questions will help you step back, get away from the issue or the project or whatever, and then just remind yourself, pause, get centered, and genuinely think about it. Because as silly as it sounds, you might think your mind's working and thinking all the time. Actually, you're on autopilot a ton and you're just going through the motions and you're trying to knock out, knock out the papers, knock out the widgets, knock out the work, knock out the project. When the fact of the matter is, you should really take a sobering look at what it is you're doing. And sometimes I need to remind myself that. So I have these questions here. So whenever I'm not sure what to do, I look at them and they remind me, think, think. This is one of my favorites. I call it the move the needle questions. I always think about everything that I do, everything that you do, not everything is created equal in terms of magnitude and moving this world forward. So I as a business owner am continually looking for ways to invest myself and my material into the market so that it can impact people, whether that's a free giveaway, a webinar, a video series or a training program or my coaching program, its methodology and so on. So I always want to look at three areas related to is it going to move the needle? Is it going to make an impact? So I, I think about the, its relevance. Is it actually relevant in what's going on in that person's life, in my life, in the world and so on? Is it different? Is it unique? Is it me? I, I don't want to be a copycat. There's plenty of other people out there who, 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 who can copy. The world doesn't need another one of them. So is what I'm putting out genuinely different? Does it have my personality in it? Does it have my energy and my enthusiasm? Does it have my experience, my unique value? My unique value. I can tell you there's a lot of other coaches that are out there that do what I do or talk about what I talk about. But am I bringing my 30 years to the table and with everything that I have to share with you or whoever is, in, is encountering what I'm giving? So is it different and am I making a major contribution? So I always weigh this one whenever I, whenever I get tempted to do something for a buck, which is rare. Uh, and I know we all need to earn money because we need to feed our families and I need to stay in business and all that good stuff. But I look at the contribution first because I always feel like if it makes a major contribution, the money part will take care of itself. So is it relevant? Is it different? And am I making a major contribution? So every time I'm about to start a big project or I'm looking to tinker with it to improve it or I'm looking to upgrade something I've already done. I ask myself, how can I make it more relevant? How can I make it different? And how can I contribute more? Love those needle mover questions. Then I have my goals. Uh, I, I, I have a handful of goals that I work on. These are process goals. I, I rarely have metrics goals. I look at analytics for my business. I look at 
things in my life that I would like to improve, but I genuinely focus on progress and the journey and the process that I go through every day. So as an example, I would like to make sure that I go through my checklist every day. I affirm my why every day. If I can go through all of these, I call that a victory because the process that I'm going through, I know in turn will turn into positive outcomes and an enjoyable day, which ultimately I think should be everybody's goal, probably the number one goal to be truly happy in what you do and what you contribute to this world. But when you start putting metrics on things and you become so numbers focused, I think it can become a little disheartening, especially because those numbers are usually expectations and we're not focused on the appreciation and the journey. So I have a handful of goals that I, I reflect on, I look at, uh, th th those are next in, in the journal and, and uh, I always look at them uh, usually on a daily basis but at least weekly. Then I get into the daily journaling. So every day in the morning or at lunchtime if I do not have a meeting, uh, I will take a few moments and what's nice is I kind of recap what's happened or what's happened in the morning. I exercise in the morning and do a number of other things in the morning and then I like to quickly journal and I like to go through my gratitude. Everything in my life, uh, I, you know, I used to do three things a day. Now I probably do 25 things a day. Everything from my home, my family, my health, my dogs, you, my community, uh, members of the Mile Walk Academy, whoever it is, I'm always offering appreciation and I never lose sight of it. Even the silly things, my, my iPhones and my cameras and my lights and whatever. Anything that makes my life tick, I want to be appreciative of it and know that I have been very blessed and it is very easy to forget this in the world we live in and it's also very, very easy to forget it when we're hanging out on social media too much and we're watching highlight reels from all of our friends. That is one way not to be happy and to lose sight and, and ha start having expectations. Just stay grounded in appreciation, you will be happier. So, and writing it down stimulates different parts of the brain, it, it engages you more, you are physically engaged in the appreciation. I love it, it's one of my favorite parts of the day. It doesn't have to take very long, but, it, but the benefits of it lasts all day until you go to the next day and it's over and over again. So that, that's a big part of what the journal is mostly filled with. And then I have uh, one other thing. There are a number of keepsakes that I, I have and cards and things that I, that I absolutely love. They're with me all the time, uh, but it's, it's really uh, wonderful reminders. I use little flip calendars and cards and other things that I, something if, that I love so much I might even you know, type it out. Make a, make a quote card, laminate it, just so that I have it with me and it doesn't wear out because I love it so much. I've got a few, of, a few of those as well. So these are all things that are in my journal and I absolutely live with it. It's with, it's with me all the time, but I, I live with it and I live by it. And I hope, I hope sharing this with you has given you some different ways to look at how to think about your day. Now, you don't need to do every, every single one of these things all at once. Um, these are things that I, I look at throughout the day, some things I look at once a week, but it's always with me and I always have it at the flip of a fingertip and I can get myself centered again and this is what helps me generate ideas. This is what helps me think about how I'm going to approach my day, how I'm going to approach my project, how I'm going to approach the people that I interact with. This is where a big part of the energy and the passion comes from and I hope it energetically and passionately helped you. Now, if you are loving this, give me the thumbs up. If you are watching this anywhere other than the Tips for Work and Life blog and the YouTube channel, hop over to those sites. Make sure you are, make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel. I release new videos every week and I have my live office hours every Thursday. I'd love for you to stop by so I can get to know you a little better and help you on a deeper level. And until next week, have a great one.